Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thanks for joining me. Before we start, let me know what your favourite wheeled IFV or armor personnel carrier is out there. This is certainly an interesting one for me today because I've reached out to Patria in the past and there was some discussion between me and Patria as a company seeing if I can work alongside them but I think they're just either really busy or maybe they just have no interest in bringing me along. But Patria, if you're watching, hopefully we can work something out. I'd love to be able to look at some of your platforms. I really respect and uh, do thoroughly think that your platforms are an incredible bits of kit. And this is actually one of them that I want to focus on a little bit today because armor personnel carriers, I believe, don't get as much spotlight as they should. Today, we're taking an in-depth look at the Patria 6x6 Armoured Vehicle, which is Finland's latest 6x6 wheeled armoured personnel carrier, and it's rapidly gaining attention worldwide. Unveiled at the Eurostatory 2018 Expo and entered service in 2021, the Patria 6x6 builds on decades of Finnish experience in APC design. It's considered the successor to the famous Sisu Passi series and a cost-effective complement to the Patria AMV 8x8 fleet, which is an incredible platform in itself. Now, the vehicle was identified with a need to be more affordable and modular, with a high-performance truck-like APC to complement its larger 8x8 vehicles. The goal was a simple design, about half the cost of the Patria AMV, while retaining strong mobility and protection. To achieve this, the 6x6 reuses many proven components from the AMV, but with one less axle. It has independent suspension on all six wheels, and customers can choose either coil springs or hydromatic dampeners as an option. The vehicle's layout is actually very practical. A Scania five-cylinder diesel engine sits behind the driver on the left, leaving a passage on the right for the rear troop compartment. Now, this may seem very benign, but I've been involved in a very serious road traffic accident in a Warrior 512 tracked vehicle. Yes, I went upside down in a Warrior in the back of the vehicle as a third man crew member. Having to try and recover my driver out the front was uh, quite a challenge in the crew compartment of the Warrior. And it's nice to see that uh, Patria is looking at options where accessibility to other crew members if in a pinch or in a dangerous situation is doable and there is lots of room between that crew compartment for that to happen and I take a bit of a personal note to that and I respect that because I have been involved in a pretty scary situation and when there's a pinch of someone being at risk within your crew you want to be able to get them and drag them out easily no matter what the situation is so I kind of respect that I like that it has a really good passage giving room to the troop compartment if necessary. The two-person cab with an optional third seat features a large windshield and side windows for excellent visibility. This does not require the need for cameras, but it can have them. The front two axles are steerable by default with optional large rear steering axles for tighter turns. The controls are deliberately truck-like, allowing drivers to adapt to minimal training of this vehicle. Patria has also made the 6x6 easy to produce and maintain. Final assembly and custom outfitting can be done even with local partners in the customer's country. Overall, the design stays quite simple and very cost-effective while meeting modern military requirements. And this is why I love this vehicle. It's just easy. It works. It's not overly complex. It's not too much, but it can be due to that modular need. I think militaries around the world are starting to see that wheeled platforms, wheeled APCs are making a lot more sense than tracked, uh, because wheeled sometimes even have better off-road capabilities than tracked vehicles do. And the fact that it is coming at maybe a half or even a third of the cost is a big deal for militaries nowadays because, let's be honest folks, the budget's tight. But despite its simple design, don't underestimate this vehicle. The Patria 6x6 offers impressive mobility. Thanks to that full-time 6x6 drive and a very powerful engine, it has speed and agility comparable to the larger 8x8 APCs. The 394 horsepower Scania diesel engine propels the vehicle up to 100 km an hour on road. That's pretty impressive, folks. It also performs very well off-road with independent suspension and high ground clearance, allowing it to tackle rough terrain with ease. As you can see, it also performs very well in the snow, which of course, for Nordic nations, is imperative. The 6x6 can clamber over half-meter obstacles, cross 1-meter trenches, and ford water up to 1.5 meters deep, as you saw early in the footage there. It can float around without a huge amount of preparation. Even at full combat weight, its power to weight ratio is about 18 kilowatt per ton, ensuring it doesn't bog down when loaded. With a full fuel load, it boasts a cruising range of 700 kilometers between refuels, which is beyond the normal 500 kilometers that I'm used to in the British Army. An optional amphibious kit further extends its reach. Two rear mounted propellers enable the Patria 6x6 to swim at around 6 to 8 kilometers an hour in water, which is handy for river crossings or some basic coastal operations, but certainly not the same configuration as what you would put maybe with the US Marine Corps, but I'm sure it could still do it. 
A central tyre inflation system can also be fitted, which is pretty standard to these vehicles nowadays, letting the driver adjust tyre pressure on the move for different terrains. Altogether, the 6x6 mobility profile makes it very well suited for fast moving operations across difficult terrains, getting infantry where they need to go quickly. One thing that I love about this platform is it's going to be a very good medical vehicle. If you want something that can get in and out of areas quickly, travel long distances and travel fast without having any issues of mobility, you're going to want your medical vehicles to do that. Protection is a strong suit of the Patria 6x6. The base vehicle has Stanag 4569 level 2 armor, enough to defeat rifle caliber, armored piercing rounds and shrapnel. Add-on kits can upgrade it to level 4, stopping 14.5mm heavy machine guns, gun bullets and protecting against large 10kg mine explosions. Thanks to a sturdy chassis, the 6x6 can handle this extra armor and still carry a useful payload of troops or equipment. Without add-on, its mine protection is fairly good overall. Self-protection options also include smoke grenade launchers, of course pretty standard, MBC filtration systems and automatic fire extinguishers. It even has heated windshields for arctic conditions, which you may think is just a little bit benign as well, but it's imperative that if you have these nice big windshields, you can actually look through them, because your car heaters are not going to be the same as what these kind of windows need, because they're armoured. The 6x6 can also pack a good punch. In the standard APC setup, it typically mounts a remote weapon station with a 12.7mm heavy machine gun or a 40mm grenade launcher for defence. However, very large turrets approaching one ton would reduce the total troop capacity, so most users stick to lighter weapon stations. A notable firepower option is the Patria Nemo mortar turret, a 120mm mortar system that can turn a 6x6 into a mobile artillery mortar carrier. Impressively, the vehicle can fire 120mm mortars without needing stabilizer legs, a testament to its stable design. In the Nemo variant, two crew members can operate the mortar in the back, providing indirect fire support on demand. I have done a video on this in the past and I would love to get my hands on this thing. All of these features mean that the Patria 6x6 can hit hard and survive on the battlefield despite being a more simple and affordable platform. One of the Patria's 6x6 greatest strengths though is its adaptability. Yes, the modularity. The 6x6 was designed as a multi-role platform that can be configured for many missions beyond basic troop transport. Patria has developed several variants to fulfill different roles. The standard APC, armored personnel carrier, baseline troop carrier variant, the heavy APC, an up-armored version with enhanced protection up to Stanag level 4. There is also a command post C2 variant configured as a mobile command and control hub. It carries extra radios and communication systems in the back instead of the infantry to serve as a battlefield headquarters on wheels. My focus and what I think this is very applicable for is ambulance and Kazivac roles. A medical evacuation model in development for battlefield medics has been the space for stretchers and medical staff to treat and transport wounded soldiers. This to me is a big deal. Fast, lightweight, cheap, urgent requirements. This is something that you're going to want to have, okay? And I really do think that tracked vehicles in an ambulance role are not always the best because they're a juicy target. When you see track targets, you think even looking through optics, yeah, I should probably take that out first before wheels and yes i know red crosses are on the side but let's be honest in combat it's not always the case when people follow through with the geneva convention and of course the mortar carrier patrio nemo 120 which is going to be turning itself into a self-propelled mortar vehicle for indirect fire thanks to its modular design other roles are even more possible some armies have floated concepts like air defense units or a cbrm reconnaissance vehicle built on this 6x6 chassis Patria has even mentioned the potential for counter-drone variants in the future to defend against drones. All of these versions share the same core chassis. This commonality means the army can reconfigure the 6x6 for different purposes simply by swapping out mission modules. The plug-and-play versatility gives forces great flexibility and also simplifies maintenance and training. This is a big deal. It's costly trying to go through getting different vehicles, different equipment and spares, etc. You won't have that problem with this vehicle. The Patria is still quite new, even though it was released in 2018, but it's already making its mark in several armies. Finland and Latvia were the first to adopt it under the Joint Cavs program. Latvia received its initial 6x6s in late 2021 and opened a local assembly line by 2024 to 2025 to build vehicles domestically. Finland tested pre-series units in 2022 and is moving forward with plans to field around 160 vehicles to revitalize its APC fleet. Early feedback from troops has been very positive. Drivers report the 6x6 controls are intuitive and quote truck-like, unquote, making it easier to operate. Other nations are close behind. 
Sweden received its first batch in 2023, designated the Panzerhertangib. Bill 300, yeah, something like that, and has hundreds more on order. I'm sorry, my Swedish friends, I just can't speak Swedish. Denmark is buying 130 Patria 6x6s to motorize its light infantry, significantly boosting those units' mobility. Germany selected the 6x6 as a replacement for its aging Fuchs armored transport fleet and is preparing to procure a large number in the coming years. Kind of interesting that Germany's pushing to grab all these. While Patria the 6x6 hasn't really seen combat yet, it's already proving itself in field exercises and training deployments. Its smooth rollout across multiple countries has built confidence in the vehicle's capabilities. Its success is evident though in growing international adaptation. What began as a Finland-Latvia project really has expanded into a broader common armoured vehicle system group, which gives the, I guess, intent that many other nations can join, but they have to approve of those nations joining first. As of 2025, Finland, Latvia, Sweden, Germany, Denmark, Norway have all committed to the 6x6, and the UK has an MOU signalling potential interest. Even Lithuania announced it's considering joining in. Germany aims for a huge order though, a thousand vehicles, about 300 have already been funded by this year, and Sweden already ordered over about 400 of them, which is the largest single batch so far. I think the hallmark of this program is that international cooperation. Under the CAVs, partner countries share development info and even produce vehicles locally. Latvia is assembling all of its 6x6s domestically and Germany will build theirs with local industry support. This collaborative approach spreads costs and boosts interoperability among allies. CV90 is a prime example of the success of international collaboration on a program. It's not always that case, there are other programs out there that have not fared so well, but I do feel that Patria has a very strong connection with its customers to make this work for the long term, not just a short term buzz of grabbing a few wheeled vehicles and hoping for the best. These are here to stay, and they're working well. With more customers likely on the horizon, the Patria 6x6 really is poised to become a common 6x6 armoured platform for many NATO and partner armies. It's proven to be modular, capable and affordable as an armoured vehicle, a combination that explains its rapid popularity. I do feel that it mixes the mobility of the 6x6 with some serious protection if it needs to, but the flexibility of the platform in one package is a big win for me. I love the fact that you can kind of turn this into whatever you want and it's not overly expensive or overly complicated. I do have to say, when it comes to actually putting vehicles into combat, lots of them are going to get lost. If it actually happens, vehicles are going to be destroyed, many of them. And if you can produce these quickly to replace them, that's a big win. High-tech, fancy, really exquisite, expensive vehicles are starting to become less and less apparent as the primary vehicles for militaries around the world. The 6x6 looks to set as a bit of a backbone for many armies for decades to come, and if it came to it, there was combat that they were involved in, they could be replaced very quickly. Sad to say the crews cannot be, but with the protection of pretty good Stanag levels on there, the crews should be able to survive long enough to at least get out of a nasty situation. And it may even get newer upgrades as the military needs to evolve or for whatever environment it goes into. As I mentioned, counter UAS vehicles are certainly going to be a potential portion of this market. So folks, thank you so much for joining me on this bit of a deep dive into the Patria 6x6. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit about this impressive little vehicle. If you did, please give the video a like and of course, as always, subscribe to the channel for more military vehicle content. Feel free to leave me a comment on what you think the Patria 6x6 uh, vehicle could be as a contender in the wheeled APC world. And also let me know what you'd like to talk about next in other videos and future content. Until next time, take care of yourself and I'll see you again. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.